I circle the ship with the sharks, slipping between dark waves. The water is layered with cold currents, sea creatures, and a ship that slices through it with cargo holds full of stolen people. I swim underneath the swells, away from the gaze of men and just out of the reach of jaws. Waiting. The hull of the vessel is a shadow above me, and as I follow the line of the keel, my chest tightens, hot rage building against my ribcage. I spin away as fish flit around me, stretching my fingers up toward watery sunbeams. It has been weeks since I have felt the burn of a midday sun. I miss basking in its light, letting the heat soak into my bones. Closing my eyes, I reach for a memory that twists and coils like smoke. I'm sitting on red-brown earth, under the dappled shade of a mahogany tree. Splashes of sun on my hot skin. Eagerly, I grasp for more. But as usual, the vision fades. My stomach churns with disappointment as sharp as red coral. Every time, the loss feels the same. As if a part of me is within reach, only to dissolve like mist on the tops of the waves. I turn in the water. A shiver of skin and coils, of hair and scales that flash like buried treasure. Embracing the current, I let trails of seaweed run through my hands, feel the wisps of memories fade away. I pause for a moment as the shoal once again spirals around me, glittering yellow with delicate stripes of pink, letting the beauty of the fish soothe me. Diving down, I head farther away from the ship. I know I'll need to go back, but for now... I close my eyes against the velvet slip of the water, its coolness sliding along my skin. This part of the sea is darker, and I welcome being cloaked in an unfolding gloom. Below me, an eel slinks through the depths, its muscular body only slightly blacker than the water surrounding it. Go, I tell the creature and in one inky slither, it moves away from me. I sink deeper. Enough for the cold to seep into my bones. Enough for the glint of my tail to be swallowed by the dark. I feel the pull of a current, and for a moment, I consider letting it take me. But then I remember the ship, and I tip my face toward the surface, toward the sun and the domain of humans who breathe air. I swim up once again, my task fresh in my mind as I see the wooden hull of the ship plowing through the ocean. I'm reluctant to drift too close in case I am seen by humankind. Instead, I lurk in the midnight shade of the sea, the bellies of the great whites gleaming above me. They glide closer. Flat obsidian eyes and teeth ready. I shudder, turning away from their large bodies as they track the ship, even though I am doing the same as they are. We both seek those that enter our domain. As the creak of the ship echoes in the deep, I stroke the gold chain that hangs heavy around my neck, its links cold against my skin. My fingers move over the sapphire that gleams in the murk. And then, there it is. The water crashing and hissing with the force of a body entering. Bubbles rise and pop, leaving only the descent of splayed limbs and crimson-stained skin. I swim faster as a shark darts forward. Blood curls in the sea, red ribbons on spooling in the deep. Pushing my way upward, I try to ignore the copper tang in the water as I swim between the gray and white creatures. Wait, I command them as the body sinks. They circle impatiently, black eyes flashing. I turn to the person, catching a glimpse of their unseeing eyes and an open mouth, bruised and swollen. 